So a 20 inch tall picket fence is what we're up to here. I'm not sure what a 20 inch fence is gonna keep in or out, but I guess we will find out. I am useless. Today's video is brought to you by our good friends over at Nationwide Industries, the Fence Pros number one choice. And they are this Fence Pros number one choice for a couple reasons. One, we love using their Keystone Traverse latches. They're easy to install. You simply bolt them onto the post. No drilling for rods or cutting the rods required. It's a pretty straightforward installation process. We also love using their full line of galvanized hardware. It shows up quickly and reliably. All right, guys, today's video is titled Creative Ideas and Ways to Recycle and Reuse a Wooden Pallet. Garden Fence Ideas and Design by the Woodworking Skill Channel. Pallet fences are always interesting. It seems like people spend more time and energy trying to save money by using pallets than just building the fence, even with cheap pre-made panels or something like that. I, we'll see We'll see how this one turns out. Question for the audience, as you're watching, have you ever seen a pallet fence that looked fantastic? Don't know that I ever have, but today could be the day. Let's see. If you'd like to watch this video in its entirety without my commentary, we will include a link in the description below. All right, standard pallets, probably 48, 40, 48 long. So 48 inches, I say long, the direction that the forks would enter and then uh, 40 inches wide. So 48, 40 is pretty typical. Sometimes you see 40, 45, 40s, but say these are 48 inches tall. So we've got a four foot fence going here or a 40 inch fence, depending on how he lays it out. Typically you would see people standing on edge. That way they're 48 inches tall. That's the versatility of a pallet. You can have a 48 inch fence or a 40 inch fence, depending on how you orient them. Or sometimes we've got one here in town that I see occasionally that uh, it's alternating. So one pallet is 48 inches and the next one's 40, 48, 40. So, you know, people get creative. I guess we're not talking in this video. It's another silent movie. We're cutting it in half, okay. Now there's a 20 inch tall fence. It's interesting. What is this thing you're doing? So that's interesting. We're not cutting in a half on both sides. So we're gonna offset cut this one. It's obviously still turn loose, but one side will be higher than the other. So a 20 inch tall picket fence is what we're up to here. I'm not sure what a 20 inch fence is gonna keep in or out, but I guess we will find out. I am useless. Wonder what we're up to here. So we've marked them and we're working center. And we're dog earing, well not dog earing, and we're gothic cutting them. Um, so, you, so you're gonna have a really sharp uh, pointy picket right about at knee height. That, uh, I don't know if this is the greatest idea. Mark my words, this is a bad idea. Maybe this guy doesn't have rambunctious kids like I do, but this would, this would spell disaster, absolutely. So typically you would dog ear these where you just 45 cut the corners off, leaving a blunted top, but it still looks more decorative. Sharp pickets, anything less than six foot tall is generally opening yourself up for liability, at least here in the United States. I mean, a kid runs and falls and tries to jump over it and catches themselves on this thing. This, not a great idea. It's a bad idea from the start. Definitely gotta clean these up a little bit. That right, will dress this right up. The crafting is not done yet. So maybe we're building a post cover here, like a post wrap maybe. Yeah, big post though. I think that is maybe like a six by six or something. That'd be post covers, right? 
three sided thing fit over the posts. Maybe not. Some of them are post covers. Are we are we attaching the post covers to the post? Would be a question. What is giving this thing any stability? I've got some serious concerns about the structure of this thing. So we are screwing the pallets to the pallet lumber. So the pallet, what I would call pickets, that aren't really attached to anything. I mean, they, they're surrounding the porch uprights, but they're not actually... Well, maybe we're, maybe we're uh, skipping ahead here. So let's see how they get attached. As of right now, this thing's just loosey-goosey. Are we supporting this in any way, I wonder? It's a massively wide section. Maybe we're putting those cutoffs under it. Still haven't seen how we're securing this thing. Spray probably some... Using that gun, probably varnish maybe, I don't know. Probably would have been better to uh, take it out in the yard and spray it before you install it. Because the problem is here, like where the panels overlap the post covers, isn't going to get... Well, I guess he's probably doing this for decorative reasons anyway. But I probably would have sprayed it before installing it. I guess it's a concrete floor, but he's still not covering it. So it's whatever he's spraying on this is going to get on the concrete. I don't know. We'll, uh, we'll see how this wraps up. I don't know what this thing... I mean, I guess he probably did it to make a video about making things out of pallets. Um, I mean, this isn't for any sort of, you know, functional purpose, I don't think. It's what would it keep in or out. Uh, and it's got no support. So this thing's going to move all over the place. If, you know, a dog or a kid or anything would likely push this thing right out of the way if they don't fall on it and just absolutely impale themselves. Well, guys, let me know in the comments below. What do you think? Is this the uh, best use of a pallet? And uh, what would you do differently? Let me know in the comments below. Always enjoy engaging with you guys there. For now, I'm Joe Everest, the fence expert, reminding you that good fences make good neighbors. And I'll see you next time.